Hey, hey, I wonder if anybody will be on today if we come to try to talk from the cottage of love and light where it's a very strange time in the world and we can still connect over the internet. Hey, hey, come on inside. I waited on a couple of people to hop on because I'm here again to talk about the living sauerkraut, which is something you might want to consider adding in for the good building up of your microbiome good bacteria. Hello, I see friends in the house. Hey, what are you doing? Tripod Tanny in the house, you're welcome. And I'm not like up, up all up in your business, you know. <laughs> what was that joke? It went, um, What was that? Why was the pepper no oh yeah. Why was the pepper nosy? Does anybody know? Cause he was jalapeno business. Jalapeno see. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, it's like a ghost town around here and I I like to go places and I I can't be trapped. Furthermore, if you're trapped, if you're confined, if you're isolated, if you are being quarantined, think about this. There's raws, the ebb and flow of raw food. Do, do nutrients matter? Yes. Do calories matter? Yes. If you eat a whole, a whole, if you took a date with the box of seven hot dates and you ate them all, are you working on the, the quarantine 15? You know what I mean? I just read that. The quarantine 15. Sitting on your honey, you ain't moving, and you're eating more. You're stocked up. Woo! Party, right? No thank you on that. But anyway... So, let's talk about this. The other day I came on and I have clearly been silenced by the powers that be at YouTube because I was playing music. Not much, but a little bit. And normally, I will sacrifice the videos being able to, to be monetized for the vibe of the music. Can you get on with the vibe? Used to, you could play 10 or 15 seconds and now apparently no because every day I get, hello, it's an email. YouTube has demonetized 25 of your videos, 20 videos, 20. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time, you know, and now, um, I don't know. It's a, there's no rules. Play by the rules. So there's no music, okay? Anyway, so I want to tell you about this. If you saw my sauerkraut video the other day, then I'm sorry this is a repeat because I, I uploaded it and I looked and I was like, excuse me excuse me, where is my video? So anyway, back to the crap. Here's what we're talking about today, okay? We're talking about the crap and we're talking about making it like this, okay? This is something you can do at home with the things you have on hand without buying like a, um, a crowding crock and whatnot, right? So I wanna tell you what's in that. The reason this is worth explaining to you is because it is a no salt sauerkraut. You know why? Because I don't eat salt, but I love to bring in the living probiotics, the good bacteria, in sauerkraut, fermented veggies. I'm going to start doing more ferments, and I'm going to bring them here to you live on YouTube. But also, we're going to start doing bigger batches because I'm going to be incorporating that. When you think about what's going on, in, and if you watch this after the fact, it's kind of a scare, and we have, we have Ellie, you know, running around saying... Who's here? Mommy, it's Rona, it's Rona, run! You know? <laughs> I'm like, her name is not Miss Rona, it's Corona, and she's not here. But just in case, go over there and lock the door, you know? I mean, we don't want to be, be coming from fear-based mentality because obviously what you focus on grows and, and fear can breed more fear. But then again, I'm not trying to step in front of somebody coughing saying, me, me, get me, you know? So what can we do? We can be building up our health like I've been doing all these years and you probably have been too, right? Well, if you've not been adding in live probiotics, if you've not been adding that in, cleaning out your gut, getting your gut tract right, you could be really missing a cornerstone of your health, you know? Because I feel like a lot of the dis-ease that I came from in the past came from the fact that my guts were totally ruined. Even the fact that it was creeping up my throat and causing me to have just 
basically 60 and 70 acid bumps on my tongue and all these ulcers down in my gums and all these different things. So anyway, let's talk about this with the no salt sauerkraut. Some people think you can't, it can't be done, but it absolutely can. And I have another um, video up years ago, no salt sauerkraut, but this one's even better. So here we go. This is what was in it. And I know somebody's going to say she's touching her face. There's, I'm only in here by myself. It's what I do, okay? So you take about one pound of green or purple cabbage, okay? You could get the pre-diced kind, and if you do, you're going to have to be mindful to make sure that's submerged under the brine because those little pieces try to come around the edge, you know? So anyway, if you're, if you're slicing and dicing it yourself, I like the sort of chiffonade look where it's longer pieces, plus they make a, a beautiful krauty existence on your salad or soup or whatnot. Remind me to tell you a little trick with the soup, too. But anyway, back to the recipe. One pound or so, maybe one and a half pounds, depending on your container size, of green or purple cabbage. You could have a little carrots in there. You could have a little diced uh, red pepper, which I put in mine, or orange or yellow pepper. You're going to dice that up small. You're going to get it all mixed up. Then in there, you're going to want to do this in a big bowl. Now, preferably, I will be doing this with you. But I'm not, so this is what we're doing, okay? So anyway... I know somebody's gonna say that after the fact. What you're gonna add in is three tablespoons of dulse flakes, or if you use dulse leaves, which is a type of seaweed, you're gonna wanna dice those up, okay, because they come in longer strips. While we're doing that is we're adding in minerals and it's adding in a little sodium and it's a preservative and it's gonna help really get you the brine going in there. So anyway, add that in, three tablespoons, or you can use about two tablespoons of wakame seaweed. W-A-K-A-M-E, in case you don't understand my accent. Then, you're going to add in about two to three tablespoons of cumin powder. Um, I got the organic kind from McCormick. The reason I'm telling you the brand is because the next ingredient, it, the spice will depend on what kind you get. So anyway, two to three tablespoons. I used about two, um, three tablespoons because I like that flavor. Then I had about a half tablespoon, maybe a little bit more, of red chili powder from McCormick's Spices that was the organic. You could add a little bit more. Depends on how spicy you like it, you know. Um, I could have added more than that, but I'm telling you to be safe about half of a tablespoon. Then what you want to do, you get all those spices on there, and you're going to kind of toss them around. Then what you're going to do with clean hands or put on gloves if you don't want that to get in your ring or under your nails, you really are going to get it with a squeeze. Now, you might have one of the kraut mashers, you know, which is very handy. You could use the bottom of a, jar, of a container like this and really grind it in. Though. Maybe you have arthritis like I used to have and you can't bend your hands like I used to couldn't and now I can. Why am I saying that? Because healing is real when you do all the things and this is one of the many things you could be doing, right? Start with one of the things and build up to all the things. So anyway, you're going to mash that really good. What you're trying to do is get that seaweed, a little bit of sodium in the seaweed, to pull out the moisture in the veggies, the cabbage. Now, it's not going to pull it out as much as if you had actual salt. If you eat salt, can you add a little in there? Sure, but I don't. I haven't eaten salt in probably 16 or 17 years, and it served me well. Um, I get my minerals and my sodium from seaweed, sea veggies, and veggies and greens. So um, that works better for me. Anyway, you're going to get that mashed really good. Now, if it's not bringing out the moisture because you're having a hard time mashing, start by adding in about half of a cup of water. You're really trying to get the moisture pulled out of that. You're probably going to have to add a little bit of liquid. You can, in addition to... Um, the mixture, not add water, but add celery juice if you have that, which is good because it's additional sodium tasting, you know, a little salty. Anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to get that all mashed up, then you're going to pound it and push it down into a container. Now, this is mine. I got this one, um, which I'm going to show you something else next week. When it comes in, you will be so excited. You're going to love it so much. But this one was $2.99 over at Ross, and it has just a screw on top, all metal inside, now, I don't have it tightened all the way down. I'm going to tell you why, but I also have, this is just a Pyrex dish that goes right up under this because sometimes the 
the gases as this is starting to get the probiotics in there. You know, the bacteria is starting to grow. It can create a little pressure and can actually, it could bust your jar if you don't let some of the air out. That's why it's not completely tightened on down here so tight. So anyway, just in case there is any overflow, we don't want that in our cabinets, and so we have this under it. But what you're going to do is you're going to push that down into the bottom. Now, you see there's a good bit of liquid on by now. That's because this has been going for about four days. It's going to be ready in about, at about seven days, so we'll give it a few more days. But anyway, you get this all pushed down in there. Then, on top of it, what you want to do is you want to add in some larger um, cabbage leaves. So you have those whole, and you're gonna, and they're normally cup up like this. You remember back when you nursed your babies and you had mastitis and, and you went around with cabbage leaves on your boobs, you know? It really works. So anyway, that's another story. But anyway, you know how you normally like cup that on your boob? Okay, not like that. You're gonna cup it down, right? You're cupping it down. So anyway, that's funny, right? You <laughs> Ellie rolled her eyes. So you got it down, and you're trying to get all the little pieces down in there. This is why it's better to have the little bit larger pieces of cabbage. Don't dice them too small. They're going to kind of shrink down anyway. There's going to be a, a lot of shrinkage going on, right? So anyway, push that down there like you're cupping the boot, right? Then you might want another. It's going to be double cup, double cupping, okay? Double cupping. You're going to push it down in there. Then you're going to take your pounder, even either your fist or maybe you have a, uh, in this case, I could use a, pint size of the little mason jars push that down in there then push it as much as you can you're kind of trying to get the brine the little bit of moisture to rise above the veggies right this is what's important because it's going to keep that down in there and grow the bacteria you want and not the ones you don't want okay trust me push it down in there you might need to add a little bit more water you're not going to want to add more than you need why because we want it to be a very potent sauerkrautish sauerkraut right to, to make you say my name right so when it would make you say bam when you taste it anyway so you're going to push that down you might need to add a little water then when it's all done in there and you have it fixed you're going to cup it up you're going to top it and you're going to put it inside this you're going to put it down under your cabinet in a dark place okay then you're going to leave it for a few days after about say five or six days you could check it but if you do that and you, you have to move the cabbage, the cuppage of the cabbage left and see how it is down there, you're going to want to make sure you get it cupped again. Fix it all back up. Tuck it back in. Night, night. Put it back in there. I would just suggest you take it seven days. Once, this is another trick. I got two tricks. Once it is as crowded as you want it, as sour, you know, anyway, and you say bam, then you're going to go, okay, this is good. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this. You could slide it in the fridge like this, but you're not going to because you're going to I forgot something too. Oh, wait right here. I have to get some. Hold please. Emily, you forgot something. She went on the road. Lay back swerving like your George Jones. Sage smoke blowing out the window. And crackers sliding in the dehydrator. So... On top of the cabbage leaves, how are you going to keep everything submerged is you're going to have a weight on there, okay? This is what's perfect in this. In here, this is one with spices. Clearly, we're going to get a clean one. This is just a mason jar, half pint, with one of these tops on there. What you're going to do is you're going to fill it up with water so it's weighty then. As you, if you really get a good look, you, you can't really see, but anyway, it's this is pushed down in there, okay? Pushed and then the brine, the liquid's on top, then you're gonna cap it, okay? This is what you do. Now, there are other things you can do that are, um, there's containers that come with like a, a release, gas relief valve, and then there's there's the, the crystals that you can put on the weight and all this. I have a new thing coming. It's not that, but it's coming, and, and I'm gonna show y'all. But anyway, you can do it with the things you have on hand. Now, Carly used a big crystal. Now, she did tell me that, because I was like, Girl, I'm making the crown, and I know she was thinking, what? It just sounds like something she'd be doing. Anyway, so then she, she's making some, and she put some big crystals, and she's like, well, you know, not all crystals are created equal, and, you know, you can't put all the crystals, but some of the crystals, so weight it with something. Weight it down, okay? And uh, and make sure you don't use something like, oh, this is a good paperweight, and you rinse it off, not realizing that it's got toxic dyes on there, and that's going into your crown. Now you're toxifying your system with the dyes off this 
ornamental owl you had, okay? Don't put that in a fish tank either. It's a really bad idea. You're like, why is the water orange? I didn't do that, okay? So that's what you do. Now here's, the, here's another thing. When you're ready to store it, you take all of your kraut out of there and you're gonna put it in, say, a 32 ounce mason jar and you're gonna cap it up and you're gonna slide it in and it will last for a long time, weeks and weeks in the fridge. But you're gonna scoop it in there. You wanna put a little bit of water, in, a little bit of the brine, which is the mixture in there. But get this, you've got that in there. So you know you're gonna eat that during the week. So you're ready to make another batch. So you get everything in the bowl, you're mixing it up. And instead of adding a little bit of water, you add this, that's already the brine that's going. You see what I mean? Why would you do that? Because it's like if you're making kombucha and you use that thing that, that I used to call a scooby, but it's a scoby. And is that right? A scoby? And so it's got the bacteria on there and you're bringing it over and it's like, it's already a bacteria party. You're just adding to it, right? So anyway, um, that's what you do. Add it in there and that gets the brine going and it makes it ferment even quicker. Here's a great thing too. Let's say you're making, you watched my video the other week that was talking about last week, that was talking about how to make an awesome raw soup every time. I told you to get your paper and your pencil and you are in quarantine now and you have your stuff and you've made, you have been a raw soup prepper. You've got that soup in the refrigerator, you've got it in the freezer, you put it in flat baggies, BPA free, Ziploc, because then you can pull it out in the morning. You, you tend your six kids that you're like, my gosh, like, how do these teachers do it? And then you have all your soups and every stuff, right? But anyway, when you're making the soups, you can add in the kraut in there. You were talking about taking the flavor up to a whole new flavor extravaganza. What do you think? Do y'all have any questions about the raw sauerkraut? Again, the recipe was one to one and a half pounds of green or purple cabbage, a little bit of carrot, a little bit of pepper in there. I forgot to tell you something. In mine, I also had, it's professional like this, okay? Just go, go with the flow, okay? It's a spaghetti. All right, take the long way home. Anyway, so here's what else I had in there. I had about three quarters cup of diced fennel. Why would I do that? Because it helps with digestion, especially fermented fennel. fennel. Let me tell you this too. So you just dice that and add it in. The fennel too, what, what it does when you eat fennel raw in your salads, or I have another little recipe for you, this is a little bonus. Um, it helps your body not to form gas pockets in the GI tract. It helps you to digest food too, but what's that good for? Well, because then after you've eaten all this produce and you don't understand, well, I thought I was gonna feel better on this raw diet, and now I can't digest anything. That's because people's gut tracts are in a poor position right now, okay? But it doesn't have to be. But while, while it is, and you're like, and you come into bed, and your man's like, hey, baby, I, I have the worst headache. You don't have headache. You know what you have? Does anybody know? You're not used to eating plants. You don't have a headache. You have gas, right? So this is a way that you can help yourself, right? So um, get on board. Anyway, here is the, the recipe, the bonus recipe. Oh shoot, back up to the kraut recipe. One and a half pounds of green or purple cabbage, okay? You can have a little carrots in there, you can have a little peppers. Somebody say, can they add onion? I, I think it might make it too, it's sort of like when you're dehydrating crackers and you, you taste the batter ahead of time, you're like, this tastes good. And then you try to feed the finished cracker product to your grandson. He's like, what, granny, spicy. That's because it really like condenses and, and um, the flavor is gonna be too intense. So I probably wouldn't do that. But anyway, so we have all that grated in there in the bowl. Then we add three tablespoons of dulse flakes or two tablespoons of wakame seaweed. I have a better explanation at the beginning of this recipe if you're just joining. Two to three tablespoons of cumin powder, half tablespoon to a little bit more of red chili powder. Both of those are, were from McCormick's Organic brand seasoning, so you know the spicy right there because it can be a, a big grade of spicy or, or, or hotter or notter. Um, then we have 
about the three quarters cup of fennel diced in there, okay? And then I told you how to do that and you add in a little bit of the, the water or even celery juice. Not much, start out with about half a cup. That's how you do it, okay? The bonus recipe is this. Two tablespoons of black walnut butter. Tanya, I'm on quarantine. I don't, I, all I have is almond butter. Yes, use that. All I have is cashew butter. You never use that because you say it's not raw. You eat it, use it. You see what I mean? That doesn't mean, well, I'm just going to use what I have. Look, don't use Duke's mayonnaise. You know what I mean? Don't use planter's peanuts. Those things are, are roasted. And first of all, they've got myotoxins in there. They're not even really a nut. They were stored in silos. They're toxic poison. Put down those planter's peanuts. So anyway, let's say you have the two tablespoons of black walnut butter or what you got on hand, two to three tablespoons of lemon juice. Why do you have lemon juice? Because you know you're on isolation and you froze up, you had all these lemons. And what you did was you took some lemons and you peeled them and then you put a little bit of water, you blended them up in your high speed blender, right? And then you poured them in ice cube trays you popped them, you put them in the baggie after they were frozen, they're duh. And now you have fresh lemon. And you're not having to worry of those things going bad. Or you put your lemons in a Debbie Meyer green box. There you go. Anyway, two or three tablespoons of lemon juice. Half a cup of fennel. You never thought of that, did you? And then half a cup of the light parts of celery and a little bit of water. How much water? Well, it depends. If, was there water in your ice cube, lemon water cubes or not? Anyway, that is the base recipe, and you could add in, friends, the fennel in there. It, it was so digestible. It was so good, and it gave like a nice twist to the flavor, but not overwhelming. What do you think? Does anybody have anything to say about that? What, what have you done to prep your way into streamline in existence? What, what have you done to make sure you're not just held up in the house like, well, this is vegan. Those are vegan cookies, vegan chips, vegan pizza, and vegan kielbasa. What are you going to be on the other side of this ordeal, right? How will you feel after this meal? You'll feel like a dang kielbasa. How do you want to feel light and fluid and free, right? Did you, did you do raw, raw soup prepping? Did you do sauces? You can freeze these things. Did you buy frozen fruit? Did you buy, sell bananas the other week and you, you peeled those and you put them in your, your Ziploc baggies? And you go, well, I can't use those. I just froze them in their skin and I don't know how to get them out of there. Freezing bananas in their skin is the best way to get results long term because they are airtight. You know what I mean? No air is getting in there. You're like, well, I can't get them peeled. All you got to do is fill up a little basin with warm water, drop your nanas in there in the skin, wait a couple minutes, you know, go brush your teeth or something, come back, peel them out, take them from the end, squeeze them out. Okay, that's what you do. So did you do all that? Did you buy up extra greens and did you freeze those? Oh, I didn't know I could freeze greens. Well, you're not going to reconstitute that into a dang salad, but you can put it in a green smoothie, a green soup. What do you think? Um, how about nut butters? Nut butter? How about nuts and seeds? Well, I can't digest nuts and seeds. Well, are you buying them really raw? And are you soaking them? Well, I saw somebody else say I don't need to soak my nuts. Well, I do because I'd like to be able to digest them and uptake the nutrients in there. You know what I mean? Um, what else? How about seaweed? Do you have that on hand? And if so, why not? Get on the computer. Or do you sum up? You're afraid to, to peek the door because Rona is out there, also known as Corona. So spray the box with something and then bring it on in. You know what I mean? Get on your gas mask if you need to, but get the seaweed, okay? What about some green powders? Do you have that on hand? Wheatgrass juice powder. I've got wheatgrass juice. Um, I've, I've got wheatgrass powder. That's not the same thing as wheatgrass juice powder. You know why? Because you can't really, let's say you had a whole platter of wheatgrass. You can't digest that. 
you can chew the cud all you want to, but you're not really going to get the nutrients. Now, if you chew and get the juice out of it and spit it out, you could. But you cannot digest grass. Well, then that's not natural for me. Well, we don't live in a natural world, clearly. You're quarantined. You know what I'm saying? So, I like to bring in the nutrients as if it's medicine, because it is in a natural world. And I'm going to survive at the end of the day. So, back to the wheatgrass. Wheatgrass juice in the powdered form. And wheatgrass just in the powdered form. They will take the wheatgrass, okay, and they will grind it up, and they'll dehydrate it, or, or either de dehydrate and grind it up, and then put it in a powder. What happened just then is you had the whole grass product ground up into a powder. What does that tell you? There's a lot of filler that you can't digest. Your body's going to have to work through that and all. Well, it was cheaper. Well, no wonder. Do you know how much of the flat it takes to make a little bit of wheatgrass? A whole lot of it. So you pay a little more for the wheatgrass juice powder. Well, you got your money's worth. So let's say they, they juice the wheatgrass and then they're gonna dry that at low temperatures and then you're gonna be able to reconstitute that in water. You could put it in soups, sauces, really up your game. What about um, barley grass, green powders, um, really raw green powders? Highly nutritious, do you have that on hand? What about chia seeds? What are you doing? Every amino acid in there to build your body's protein? Warrior food, helps you uptake the nutrients and greens? Um, how about some flax seeds, do you have that on hand? And if you do, did you buy them raw? Don't think, okay, well, I'm gonna get all this ready, let me grind these ahead of time. Well, don't do that because what's gonna happen is you need to grind them so your body can uptake the nutrients in there. They're just gonna go, go right through. But you need to grind them right before you use them or what can happen is a lot of the nutrients are lost and they can actually become rancid, which means they went bad, right? Uh, what else? What about um, frozen uh, sauces like Tanny Raw, best raw vegan spaghetti sauce ever? I've got about four of those in there, flattened out. Okay, frozen. What about sauces? What about avocados? You can take an avocado, you can even dice it and you can squeeze a little bit of lemon on there, flip it around, and you can put it in the freezer, in a freezer bag, suck out the air out of the side, okay, so that it's as air, air void as possible, okay? And the acidic on there is gonna keep it from turning brown. An easier way to do that is take the avocado, slice it in half, Okay, open it up. If you leave the pit in there, that also helps it from browning. But let's say you take that out because when you defrost it, you're like, I can't get this off the pit. And it's kind of a pain. So you, you have it in its, its skin. You jab a knife in there and pull that out, pull the pit out. Then you take a little bit of lemon and you brush it over there. Put it in the baggie. Suck out the air. And then you have a browned free avocado in there. What do you think? Debbie Meyer green boxes. Are you storing things in the refrigerator in that? Because I can make sprouts, um, microgreens, and them last 10 days stored correctly in a Debbie Meyer green box. That's, I showed you all that many times. Do you have seeds on hand to sprout living food? live food for a live body. And if you run out of food and you are absolutely trapped in your house and you can't get anything, I don't think that's going to happen and I don't think the world's going to end. I, I've been on this earth almost 50 years and it hasn't ended yet, but who knows? But let's say you run out of food. Most people can live quite a long time with just pure water, did you know? Do you have a way to purify your water inside? So really simplify, you know what I mean? Does anybody have anything they want to say about the sauerkraut today?
I'm trying to get the raw soup recipes down because it never turns out as good. So spending some extra time getting better. You know, it really is, it's just a learning curve. A lot of times people say, well, my, my crackers never turn out. Well, mine used to not turn out either, and now they do. There is a big learning curve to, to crackers. Also with soups, um, if you're blending in, if you're fat in your soup, first of all, if you are not adding any fat into your soup, this could be why it's not particularly creamy, you know? And furthermore, you don't have to be afraid of fat. Now, I monitor the amount of fat I have. Am I like, oh yeah, oh, all the way keto, all in? Absolutely not, I'm not thinking a high fat diet is real good for my arteries. But what I do think is a low fat raw vegan diet with an adequate amount, which is low in society, adequate meaning everything I need, nothing I don't, of properly balanced raw plant fat. So let's say tonight you're gonna have omega-3, because last night you had omega-6 and you know what the heck you're doing, and you want results, so you've got a plan and you're working your plan and you're gonna get to your results. So you add in, let's say you're making a soup and you made a tomato soup and you added in ground flax in there. Okay, you figured out how much fat you need, you've put that in there. It's really a great way to give like a very hearty and nutty existence to, to a soup like a tomato soup, really good. What about balancing omega-3 and 6 and you used raw whole hemp seed hearts and maybe you made um, hearty carrot soup Anyway, let's say you used avocado for your fat tonight in your soup. What you want to do is you want to get the soup blended really good. Then at the end of the blend, you want to add in your avocado and you don't want to put it on high. You want to put it on low and just get it blended because avocados have a way of becoming more a mousse-like texture in there. And that's not what you want. You want a creamy. Um, Thomas is in the house. Shout to Spartanburg. Do you live here? Somebody yesterday on Instagram asked me if I live in South Carolina. I said, yes. And they said, oh, I'm in Lawrence, which is about, I don't know. You do, Thomas. Hello. Um, anyway, so here in Spartanburg, South Carolina, they had had, all the restaurants are closed, just like around most of the U.S., but um, I feel like if you watch the media long enough, you really can, you can have a lot of anxiety routing around this. On the flip side of that, I'm not trying to have my head in the sand either. And I do realize that a lot of people with impaired immunity systems, um, pre-existing dis-ease, people in an older category, like for example, my mom, who, who is in her late 60s, she's 68, and uh, she's had a heart attack and, and another almost one, a scare. She weighs 85 pounds and she is, she's had a lot of health challenges since that. Does she need to be going out and about and, and having just, whoo, you know, party? No, she doesn't, I don't think. I think there's no reason we shouldn't take precautions like that. I think there's no reason I don't want to take precautions because I may need to assist her. I don't want to bring that virus into her. You know what I mean? Just, just as if I wouldn't want to bring any other type of flu. I think we're going to see a, some additional problems with this, obviously, when the vaccine for it comes out and they try to force everybody to take that without really having a long-term understanding of what the heck this does to the body. You know, to be healthy in this world today, you really have to be thinking about it all the time until it becomes your ritualistic pattern and you don't have to think about it anymore because guess what? Health has become your hobby, right? I don't wanna just live and I don't wanna just eat to live, I want to eat to thrive, right? I wanna eat the food that fuels my body so that that's not the main thing in my life. That every year I feel like I'm getting healthier and every year my, my memory is sharper, right? And you really can do that. When you streamline, 
I have a huge group in my, my immersion program this time in the Raw Reset. And the friends are doing it. We're doing it while we go through it. Are some of them in quarantine? Yes. I, they're from all parts of, of the world. And it's kind of awesome because we're coming together. We're not ignoring the fact. We're also not being led by fear. We're not being paralyzed by fear, you know? What well, do y'all have anything to say about that? I'm in my late 60s and running errands for, for people in the neighborhood that need assistance. All precautions in place, but need to help my neighbors. Yes. Do you have a raw sauerkraut making video, body, mind, industrial complex? Hello, friend. I am just, that's what I'm on here doing. I'm showing this right here, and at the beginning of this video, we'll, which will load up afterwards, we're talking about this and exactly how to do it. Um, and this is the setup I have. This came from Ross, $2.99. In there, it has one of these, which is a half pint ball container actually a mason jar container with a ball top that just has water in it. That's, this is just some spices. But anyway, it has this under it, which is a Pyrex dish. Um, I also have a video on YouTube from years ago where I'm showing me making um, a sauerkraut with you, but this one is even better. It is a salt-free sauerkraut. I do not eat salt, and I will continue to be salt-free to infinity and beyond, right? I get my sodium from sea vegetables, seaweed, greens, and a wide rotating uh, variety of seasonal vegetables, you know? Um, somebody is asking, Tanny, did you fail doing raw vegan in the beginning of your journey? I have been doing this. I, I started trying to heal myself when I was a, a little bit shy of 30 years old, and I had been in dis-ease for quite a while. And um, I have a whole story on this on my tannyraw.com, and I'm not driving you there to like show you things. I'm just telling you, there's like a five minute video telling you all I've healed. I also have videos on this channel called Raw Vegan Healing Part One and Two and Healing Autoimmune Disorders. All of those are 15 minute videos. The one on my website is five minutes. But think about this. I was about 28 and 29 when I started to become very, very sick. It was apparent to me no doctor was going to help me. My choices were to go on methotrexate and prednisone the rest of my life. Do you think I would still be sitting here 18 and a half years later? No, I'd be dead because it would have killed my organs. But that's not what happened. What happened was healing. Did it happen in the first five days, the first five weeks, or the first five months? No. It took me five years to become solid, okay? From 30 to 35 on a high raw whole food plant-based existence with fasting, water fasting, low glycemic green juice feasting, um, colonics, enemas, uh, gut draining, um, volcanic ash eating, uh, colon cleansing, Hydrocolon therapy, all the things. I had to do all the things because I had no direct route. I've got the direct route for you for healing. I, healing is real. And it is real in so many people's lives that I deal with. Not deal with, that I have the privilege of speaking with. You know? Anyway, so those first five years, I didn't understand. There wasn't really... The way I do things it is actually a, a, a tanny raw way. Sometimes people will say... Well, well, what if this happens on, on this lifestyle? Well, when you say this lifestyle, what are you talking about? Are you living on Datorade? Are you living raw in the day and then it's like gorge at night? Are you living under calorie? Are you living on fruit juice? Are you living on, do you have a wide variety? Are you living on fresh, whole, right, raw fruits and vegetables with an emphasis on greens? and an adequate, which is a low amount of raw plant fat, properly balanced to make a three to six, a wide variety of seasonally rotating veggies, right? Pure water, 
hydration, body movement, lymphatic drainage, sleep, boundary setting, border monitoring. Right? Setting up goals. Overriding your natural failure mechanism with your make it happen mechanism. Because you learn the fact that when you start setting goals and you try to reach those goals, that's when you feel alive. When you're content creating your life. But in those first five years, there was no, there was no plan like that. There was like raw food or there was fasting out and I could do that for say 10 days, 20 days, 30 days. And I would kind of see, oh my gosh, I'm still in there. And I could kind of recognize myself a little bit until I had to eat again, and I didn't understand what to do, right? But there was a gourmet raw plan. You know, there was lots and lots of seeds. There was, there was just eat oranges and, and maybe a few iceberg lettuce. That's not a meal to me. I want a lifestyle that gets me healing, longevity, health, happiness, a streamlined body, freedom as if I'm five years old and it's Christmas day and finally I'm getting to jump out of the bed because that's how I feel every day, right? And it took me a while to kind of trickle into what was going to work. But once I started doing the plan, which is very similar to what I do today, it took me about eight months to lose 88 pounds and every dis-ease that I was plagued with. And I have kept that healing and streamlined body now for almost 13 years. 13 and a half years have I been a raw vegan, do, doing it the way I do it. And I can't imagine why I would ever abandon the very thing that saved me. I don't think, oh, I, I wish I could eat this or that. Well, I guess I can't eat that. People say, oh, well, well you can't eat that. You can't drink that. Friend, I can consume anything I want. I consume life because I want to feel alive. You know what I mean? So, um, what we have is a little extra bonus recipe, uh, some sauerkraut and how to do it at the beginning of this video. Next week, or as soon as I get it in, I'm going to be making with you. I'm going to bring you into the kitchen and figure out how the heck to sit. I used to bring you in the kitchen. And I, I could do like clips, but they weren't live, you know, and I really, really enjoy coming on live and, and interacting with people. So anyway, we'll make the kraut together and we'll talk about really making kraut in abundance or fermentation, salt-free fermentations in abundance so you have that on hand. And again, why would you want to do that? Because here in a time when it feels like the world is ending and it feels like people's health is very vulnerable because it is. We need to do everything we can to ramp up our health. We need to really set up borders. We need to really be building up our good bacteria. Have you ever been on a trash food diet? Well, I've been on a vegan diet all my life, you might say. Well, are you eating processed food? Because that's trash. Or, you know what I mean? Um, there's a lot of things. Hey, Alcohol, drugs, prescription or street, antibiotics, processed food, all these different things, stress, age, that can really bring down your healthy bacteria in your guts. Then, then what is overgrowing, what's having a party in there is the bad bacteria. So when something, a virus, when the Rona comes at you, right? You can't fight back. Am I saying if that attacks me that I, that I am immune to that? Absolutely not. But I'm saying I want to build up the best health constitution I can to live my best life. And I have seen people on media saying, well, um, I'll eat my shoe or whatever they said if 
I see a vegan die from the coronavirus. Well, friend, there's a lot of vegans living on Sprite and Skittles. Also, you could even have a, a lot of raw vegans not getting the nutrients they need. You could have um, whole food plant-based eaters that are coming from a really bad, what, what drove them to eating like that? A lot of people were in poor health like I was, you know? Do I think for a minute if I went back to eating a standard diet that I would be just fine? No, I think I would quickly bring back on that disease that plagued me before. And anyway, why would I do that? I can eat anything I want to, but why would I choose anything other than the food that helps me ride on the high vibrational wavelength that I like to cruise on? I, I wouldn't. I don't have to feel like, like driven by this toxic urge to eat poison food as if you're a person that's a smoker and you try to stop smoking for a few days and your body's like craving to smoke. Well, are you nicotine deficient? No, your body is trying to detox. Well, why is that? Because nicotine is a poison chemical, right? Well, so is most food now. Can you be addicted to, to organic carrots that you, you pulled out of your garden that was mineral rich? No. Can you be addicted to those little things that are called circus peanuts? Do you know what those are? They're like a puffed candy. Yes, that's chemicals. How about Debbie Cakes? How about all these different things? Chemicals. Did your food come from a plant or was it made in a processing plant? You know? Simplicity, simplicity, and during this time, what can you do while you're, you're inside? Can you streamline? Can, can you start clearing clutter in your life so that you can focus in on making room for the new beautiful things, Brenda? What do you think? Can, can you lay out on your counter a simple bowl that every time you eat, you put your food in there and nothing goes in that food, in that bowl, but your food, right? It's the bond, bowl of nourishment. Can you have that? Can you have a special spoon? Can you have, I don't know. Can you hang an outfit on, on your closet door that it's the outfit. It's, it's not even about losing weight. It's that you know how you feel in that outfit. Or you, you know how you felt when you when you felt like wearing these little little knickers or, or little um, pedal pusher pants when you didn't have psoriasis crawling up every piece of skin on your body, right? Maybe you hang a ball cap up and and you remember before your hair fell out when you had enough to put like in the back and have like a little ball cap pony back there. You are worth taking time during this time of shh. Maybe that's what the world needs. Shh. Where are they saying that this, the Rona, which is what Ellie calls it, came from? Saying it came from these wet markets from bats or, you know, different animals from all over the world that are being sold in very toxic, nasty environments. Um, coming together that wouldn't even ever be nice, very unnatural, right? And, and that maybe some of that jumped to a human and there was contact and then the virus um, metamorphosized into this thing that could attack humans and none of it's natural. How about plants, right? What's happened to this world, I don't know, but I know what's happened to mine, healing right? You can really streamline your life during this time. What do you think? The produce section is abundant while people stock up on, first of all, why do people think the refrigerator isn't going to work? Why are we stocking up on dried milk, powdered milk, and, um, and, and a sense of greed? You know what I mean? like a greed, that when we should be coming together, when we should be coming together that that political parties shouldn't matter, that that 
whether you think the present that sucks or not shouldn't matter. Like coming together, how can you help yourself and help others? And how can we this help us understand that that we're not all so different? You know, streamlining your life. Maybe you want to start with some sauerkraut. Maybe you want to start by building your good gut bacteria so you feel like you're you're doing everything you can. Start with sprouting, dehydrating, filling your body with fluid. Maybe during this time of isolation, quarantine, or maybe you're just self-quarantine, or you even go in the grocery and you're like thinking to yourself, the fact of trying to over-sanitize like that, I went into Publix yesterday, which is a grocery across the road from me, and the manager was at the door, and uh, he had on gloves, but he was like sanitizing the, the handle of everybody's basket that came in and speaking to them. And um, But then I was thinking, well, are you going to touch the side of the basket? Are you going to then touch your phone and touch the basket? Are you going to do all these different things, right? Build your health so that you, you have a front line of defense. But really, the whole section of, of what I'm in there getting, fresh food, was abundant. Furthermore, everybody's out of toilet paper, but really, if you, if you ate natural food, raw food, you don't have a whole lot of need for it. You know? So anyway, which is also funny. So get your sauerkraut on, and thank you for coming over to the Cottage of Love and Light today. And I'm sorry when somebody's gonna say, I miss you singing and dancing. YouTube is just not allowing even 10 and 15 seconds of that in there. Like, um, I, I have about 3,500 videos, and most of them are not monetized now. They're not, it'll look like it, but it's not about that. It's about giving out the message of love and light, but, but we can't even play music now because then it's blocked. So there you go. Unexpected Gypsy, Ash, hello. Brenda and Katie, Martha, Sam, thanks for coming over. I'll see y'all soon from the Cottage of Love and Light, and we will be making the kraut together, and we will be doing a kraut in a crop. See you later. Bye.